The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and suitable in your sight, O God, our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. It's all about me. How many times have we felt that way or said that? It's all about me, the day, the world, all others out there revolve around me, myself, and I. It's pretty selfish, though, if you think about it, isn't it? But I bet it's a thought that we've all had before. I don't want to point fingers at society, but we live in a culture that promotes self. We can get the best cars, the best homes, the best Christmas decorations, clothing, smartphones, whatever you need to put on top and you can get it. And if you have a smartphone, which I bet many of you do because that's probably how many of you are watching us right now, you don't even need to leave your house. You can place an order from the bookstore to the grocery store and have it all delivered to your door, which has become a helpful thing for many over these last nine months. In this society, we may even tend to want people and places to meet our expectations. This is my community, and this is how things are done. This is my church, and this is how we do things. When things revolve around us, we expect them to meet our expectations. We expect them to fit into the molds that we have created for them. We expect everything to meet our needs our desires, our expectations. It's all about me. Maybe that's why the message of John the Baptist is calling out to us or shouting out to us in the midst of this Advent season. And John is saying, hey, it's not about you. Okay, that might be reading into it a little bit, or maybe not. Our gospel passage today is about John, but it's not about John. John was sent from God to testify, to witness. Those words come up many times in our lessons today. He was sent to point to Christ, to turn people toward Christ, to help people prepare for the coming Messiah. When the priests ask who John is, he is clear about who he is not. He is not the Messiah, not Elijah not the prophet. He is the voice, the one who cries out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. John is not the one who will save us. John is not the savior, the redeemer, or the one who will turn the world upside down. John is clear there that it's not about him. It's not all about John, even though he's a fellow who draws our attention because of his looks and his diet that we heard about last week. As soon as John catches our eye or draws our ear, he redirects us. He turns us away from himself. He turns us away from ourselves. And he points and he turns us toward the coming Messiah. 
John's message of repentance and preparation calls us to turn away from ourselves, our needs, our self-focus, and towards Christ in our midst here and now. I know I've shared this reference before, but it speaks to us today. One of the Harrisburg youthquakes I attended years ago had a, the keynote speaker was Tiger McLuhan. He was engaging with both youth and adults alike. He led a session for the adult leaders that still resonates with me. He said there are two things you need to know about youth ministry. The first thing, it's all about you. And we sat there in our chairs and we're like, <laughs> all right, sweet. He said, yep, it's all about you, your charisma, your spunkiness, your youthfulness, your hipness, although saying that makes you far from hip. But he said, it's all about you, your engagement with the youth and your drawing power you will. And he said, and now the second thing that you need to know about youth ministry that makes it happen and makes it possible is this. It's not about you. At all. Even though you are the one who reaches out and connects with the youth, it is really all about Jesus and Jesus' relationship with each and every one of them. I know to say that makes it sound so obvious, but it bears repeating. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about John the Baptist. It's about Jesus. And I think that's exactly the call from John this morning. While we are in the presence of Christ in the world here and now, while our, our actions attract others, and help others to see Christ at work in our world and help people to know that God is with them today and all days, it's ultimately not about us. It's about God. At work in the world here and now through Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. I think John's message is one that needs to be heard because it reminds us that neither John, nor your pastors, nor your vicar, nor your elected officials, nor the latest pop culture sensations will save us. It's Jesus, period, full stop. We are constantly called to reveal Jesus through our words and our actions, to let our families, our friends, our neighbors, and yes, even our enemies know that God is at work in the world here and now through Jesus Christ. So, you may ask, you may be wondering, how does that work right now, Pastor Jen, in a pandemic, in a time when we are not able to gather together in this space of sanctuary, or in the social hall, or in Sunday school classrooms, or even in the parking lot? That's a great question. Thanks for asking. I'd love to answer it for you. And it's fairly simple. Because here are some of the things that have not been canceled. Feeding your neighbors dropping off actually home-cooked meals for others, or donating money or food to the food pantry or helping harvest, caring for your neighbors by wearing masks, by making space for safe conversations, by calling and emailing and sending handwritten notes to maintain connections, sharing God's love by leaving notes on your sidewalk or in your windows, by lighting up your neighborhood with lights on your house or candles in your windows. Can I just tell you that there is a house on South Robeson Street, and it is not ours, that has like a bajillion, if you count them, a bajillion things lit up and moving and just drive down the street. It's, it brings me joy every time I see it. You can be the light of Christ by sharing your God-given gifts with others. Do you sing or make music? Maybe you could record yourself and send it to someone. Are you good at telling jokes? I know there is a great joke teller watching us this morning. Uh, Claire Lutz is an excellent joke teller, so if you need a pick-me-up, you might want to reach out to her and she will tell you a great joke. Or she might record them and send them to some friends and family today. Are you good at being a member of a sports team but you're missing gathering with your team? Maybe on your own you practice your skills or you share words of encouragement through text messages to your team members. Are you good at sewing or crafting or creating? Maybe you'll make a gift for someone else. Share a picture of it on social media. Are you good at cooking or baking? Let me tell you, now is a great time to share those treats with others. With neighbors, I got a Pastor Bill's doing this. Neighbors or friends, the person who delivers your mail or picks up your trash and recycling or gives you your morning coffee if you go through a drive-thru, or just the person in your house who gives you your morning coffee. 
I feel like I'm not naming all the gifts that each of you have. Because for the number of people listening this morning or this day, there are just as many unique gifts that each of you has. If I didn't name your specific gift, please don't feel left out. Just share what your gift is. You can do it right now in the comments if you wish as a way that you can share Christ's light and Christ's joy this day. We are constantly called to reveal Jesus through our words and actions, to let our families and friends and neighbors and people in the world around us know that God is at work in the world here and now through Jesus Christ. Christ is here in our midst, right now. Take a look around and see the way that Christ's light is shining through you and others around you. And while it's not all about you, it is about the gifts that God has given you, and just you, to help show and shed and share Christ's light in the world here and now, to share that joy this day and all days, pointing to Jesus today. Let your light so shine before others, so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Let your light so shine, not that you are the star of the show, but that you may light the way for others, point others to, others to Christ, and help everyone see God at work in the world here and now. And now may the peace which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, and let all God's people say, Amen.